wand, for we are about to open the old treasure chest of truth. What's in there, Charlie? You'll see, JJ. You'll see. Ooh. I'm going to tell you about a great king named Saul from the Bible. God made Saul a great king. In fact, he was the very first king of Israel. But there was a problem. King Saul was supposed to listen to God and obey his commands, but he didn't always do what he was supposed to do. At this time in Israel's history, each of the 12 tribes had settled in the Promised Land. The Promised Land is Israel, the land God promised to the Jewish people, a land flowing with milk and honey. The 12 tribes started long before that by the sons of a man named Jacob. Each of the tribes had their own leaders called elders who ruled their own tribe. God also from time to time used judges to guide the people and lead them in battle against their enemies. The judge at the time of our story is a great man named Samuel. Now Samuel was getting pretty old, so his sons started to help him lead the tribes. But after a while, his sons decided to stop following in the ways of the Lord. So the elders of each of the 12 tribes came to Samuel. Now appoint for us a king to judge us like all other nations. Well, that really upset Samuel. He knew that God wanted to be the leader for all the people, but the people didn't want that. Why would the people want a man to lead them instead of God? They didn't understand what would happen if a king other than God ruled over them. So God told Samuel to warn the people what would happen if they chose a man to be their king. Samuel spoke out sternly to all the people. Everyone, everyone please listen to me. If you have a king, he will have your sons fighting battles, your daughters working to serve the king, and you will farm the land for him. The king will take the best of what you have and keep it for himself. He will make you his slaves. When this happens, you will cry out to God, but he will not answer. This is my warning to you. You see, God wanted the people of Israel to trust him to rule their land as king. But the people refused to listen to Samuel and wanted a king for all the wrong reasons. The elders of Israel approached Samuel and demanded to have a king no matter what Samuel had told him. No, but there shall be a king over us that we may also be like all the nations and that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. Why would all the people want someone other than God to lead them? Good question, Tilly. Well, here's what happened. God spoke to Samuel. Obey the voice of the people in all that they say to you, for they are not rejecting you, but they are rejecting me. Samuel thought about what God had told him and knew that God would choose to send him the man God wanted to be the king. But he wondered, How will I know who this young man is? that God would have to be king. And God spoke to Samuel again and said, He will come to you, and you will know he is the one I have chosen. Now Saul was from the tribe of Benjamin and the son of a very wealthy man. He was very handsome, and from his shoulders upward, Saul was taller than any of the people. Saul, we have lost the donkeys, and we must find them. Take one of the young men with you and go look for the donkeys. Yes, Father. So they traveled for three long days looking for the donkeys, but couldn't find them anywhere. Come, let us go back. My father is now probably more worried about us than the donkeys. Wait, I know a man who can help us find the missing donkeys. In the city up ahead, there is a man named Samuel who is a great man of God. Everyone respects him, and all that he says comes true. Perhaps if we ask him, he will be able to help us find the donkeys. Let's go. A short time later, Saul and his servant approached the city. Samuel could see two men coming up the road, and then God spoke to Samuel at the very moment that he saw Saul. He is the one. He will be the king of Israel. Can you tell me where to find the man of God? I am he. Please join me in making sacrifices to God and eat with me. Back then, only men appointed by God could offer sacrifices. 
Samuel was one of those men. Sacrifices were one of the ways that people gave thanks and worshipped God. We don't have to do that anymore, do we, Charlie? No, we don't, Kizzy. We can show thanks by singing songs of praise and by praying and just saying thank you to God ourselves. We can talk to him anytime we want. He's always listening. Now, Samuel was a wise prophet, and he could tell Saul was looking for something. Oh, and don't worry about your donkeys. They've already been found, and they are safe. Saul couldn't believe his ears. How could this man know about his donkeys? He surely must be a man of God, thought Saul to himself. Amazed, Saul joined Samuel in making the sacrifices to God and ate dinner with Samuel. The next morning, Samuel and Saul walked out to the city together. Tell your servant to go ahead. We will stop here for a while that I may make known to you the word of God. Samuel reached over and anointed Saul by pouring a flask of oil over Saul's head. God has told me that you are to be the first king of Israel. Me? A king? Yes, God will show you what to do and empower you to serve his people. Now go on to the city of Gilgal and wait for me. I will come in seven days and give you further instructions. So soon after Saul was anointed, he felt the Spirit of the Lord come upon him, and his heart was changed. He suddenly felt like a brand new person. Seven days later, Samuel walked out in front of all of the people that had gathered in Gilgal and the twelve elders of the tribes of Israel and loudly spoke out for all to hear. Do you see whom the Lord chose to be king? There is none like him among all the people. But Saul was a little nervous and hid in the back for a short time. But since he was a head taller than everyone else, the people could easily see him. So he came out to stand with Samuel so all the people could see him. All the people who had gathered at Gilgal cheered at the top of their lungs. Long live King Saul! They were very excited. They found their new king. Then Samuel sent all the people away, and Saul went to his home in Gilbia, and many strong men whose hearts God had touched went with him. Months passed, then a year passed, and all the while enemies from the surrounding areas kept attacking one or more of the tribes of Israel. When Saul heard about the attacks, he and his men went into battle, fighting the enemy. Because God was with him, Saul was successful. A couple of years later, there was one particular battle with the Philistines that was really big. The Philistines were one of the enemies of Israel, and they had a huge army. Saul's army was very small compared to the Philistines' army. The Israelites were afraid because they were outnumbered by the Philistine army. How could they possibly fight such a large army? They felt it was hopeless. They forgot how faithful God had been in the past. So many of them went into hiding so that they would not have to fight against the great army. Now Samuel was supposed to come to the city of Gilgal to offer sacrifices seeking God's favor for Saul as he prepared for battle with the Philistines. Israel knew that they needed God's help to win against such a big army as the Philistines had. But Samuel was running late and Saul was getting nervous waiting for him and all the people were starting to wander off. Feeling like he could not wait any longer, Saul went ahead without Samuel and offered up sacrifices to God. Just as Saul finished offering up the sacrifices, Samuel arrived and saw what Saul had done. Remember, God said only Samuel could offer sacrifices. That was Samuel's job. It was not King Saul's job. Well, Samuel was quite upset. You have done foolishly. You have not kept the command of the Lord your God with which he commanded you. If you had, then the Lord would have established your kingdom over Israel forever. But now your kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought out a man after his own heart, and the Lord has commanded him to be prince over his people, because you have not done what the Lord commanded you. Saul left Samuel and went to fight the Philistines. Some of the battles the Philistines won, and some of the battles the Israelites won. Soon, both the Israelites and the Philistines went back to their homes. Now, another time, there was a great battle against a different enemy known as the Amalekites. God commanded Saul to completely destroy the Amalekites and all their possessions. 
So Saul went into battle and decided to spare the king of the Amalekites and keep the best of their possessions to give as a gift to God. Wait, didn't God tell Saul to destroy everything? Yeah, you're right, JJ. Saul and the people didn't obey God. That's right, guys. So now, watch what happens next. When Samuel heard this, he was very upset and disappointed. He couldn't believe that Saul and the people disobeyed God. Because you've rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you from being king. Saul became very sad and told Samuel that he was sorry and even begged Samuel to pray for him for what he had done. He had clearly not obeyed God. So as Saul and Samuel were standing together, Saul falls to the floor in sadness and reaches out to grab Samuel's clothing. As Samuel walks away from him, Saul rips off part of his robe and holds the torn cloth in his hands. The Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from you this day and has given it to a neighbor of yours who is better than you. Samuel never saw Saul again until the day of his death. Wow, Saul really messed up, didn't he? Why didn't they just listen to God? Yeah, then he could have been king forever. We always have to listen to God every day, even when it's hard or we don't want to. He will never lead us in the wrong direction. He watches over us because he loves us and wants the very best for us. That brings us to the end of our story for today. And, hey, where's my crown? It was here a minute ago. <laughs> I don't know. And where's Obi? Hmm. <laughs> Quick, get him! 